I am going to do a short introduction today um, or on this dog. So this is Phoebe. She's a standard poodle. I think she's like 10 years old. Let me double check really fast. Phoebe Pets. Let's see how old you are, Phoebe. Phoebe is four years old, so she's not an old dog. Um, she is a standard poodle. So she's full size. Uh, she's a good girl, so I don't anticipate any problems today. Um, I do a clean face, which means I shave her face, shave her feet, and then I do five eights on her body, um, which isn't that long, but just a good maintenance for me. Um, my bather's done for the day, so we won't have any noise in the background, um, any dryers, but still have the interruptions. The cat will be in and out. Hey, that's enough. Um, so we just used a little bit of finishing spray for static electricity to kind of help comb out. Um, my bather does what? Oh, your kitty just mew. Um, my bather does come out, so um, most of the tangles. But I just do a once over just to make sure because I've got a really fine comb. Do it once over just to make sure they're all completely out. Hey, that's enough. No whinies. Okay, can you stand up? Stand up. Come up. brush to fluff the hair out. Um, the dogs are hand dry. Here, let me let these guys out just a minute. Okay, you guys want to go out for putty? Want to go putties? Okay, the turkey's out there. Okay. Not you, Bilbo. Go out for putties. Okay, so. Up. The more she's fluffed up, the straighter the hair is when drying the and that happens when she's dry. So this is a little curvy there. Uh, the easier it is to get a smooth, even haircut. I think this is the fourth dog I've recorded for today, or I'm recording for today. Um, and I did talk during the other videos because um, the dryer was going, and it's really hard to hear. Um, but just not Hey, come on. Come on, Titus. Go on, go, buddy. <laughs> Not you, Bilbo. You stay in. Um, so, clients don't have a very good idea of what happens after they leave their pets to be groomed. I don't let clients stay to observe their own dogs being groomed. I have said that I would allow them to watch a dog that's not theirs being groomed. And the reason for that is that um, I need their dog to fo focus on me and to respond to my energy and respond to what you know, I'm asking from the dog. And if their owner was here, they would be you know, too focused on their owner 
their owner, owner, you know, if they're fussing for their nails and then their owner starts getting stressed out about the fact that their dog's fussing for their nails, that's going to add to the stress of the dog. Um, so it's kind of a cycle that feeds itself where the owner's upset, their dog gets upset because the owner's upset, um, you know, the owner gets more upset because the dog's more upset, the dog gets more upset because the owner's more upset, whereas I, I don't get upset because this is just, you know, dogs fussing for their nails is just the reality. Um, but I think there's also an unrealistic expectation that comes because, you know, that then people assume that we're being secretive, that we don't want to know what's really going on, and that's not it at all. Um, but I think there needs to be a more realistic expectation that we deal with naughty dogs. We deal with dogs. Phoebe's not naughty. Phoebe's a really good girl. So I don't anticipate this will be a video showing how I function or how I deal with a naughty dog. Um, but there needs to be more exposure of what we have to do. The reality is, is you know, if a dog is misbehaving, that I have to address that behavior. Um, and a lot of that comes through a dog getting used to me um, and learning to trust me and to know that I'm not I, I'm not here to hurt them. So if they can trust me, then they can relax and just allow the groom to happen. Um, so I think there needs to be more this transparency of what the realities of grooming are. I don't know a single groomer that isn't a pet lover to start out with, or an animal lover. Um, but we, you know, by nature of our job, we're not dealing with willing subjects. You know, even the best dog doesn't really want to be groomed. Um, and if I get a dog that bites me and it turns out to be in the wrong area or a bad bite that gets infected, that's a career ender. So that could basically end my career if I get a dog that bites me. So it's a serious matter. It's not something that, you know, can be taken lightly and just no big deal. And I think the clients are thinking that it's just no big deal. And granted, I've never had a bad bite from a dog. I have from a cat. Um, but we, as groomers, have to do something to address that behavior. Generally, I verbally reprimand the dog um, and tell him no. I also have um, this. You can see this is called the groomer's helper. It's attached up top to my groomer's loop. Um, so it attaches up top. This is adjustable, so I can adjust this to the sides of the neck. She's a little high. And then I adjust it so that it's the dog's head being kept in a, a comfortable height for the dog. So that it's not sitting, pushing on the trachea. It's not choking the dog. Um, but the dog also can't whip around and bite me. Um, the other advantage of this system is that and you'll notice that if, if I'm grooming a dog and the dog steps off the table, I don't react at all. Because if the dog steps off the table, it's no problem to step right back up. Because this, the center of balance of the dog is on over the table. Um, and I generally will let the dog um, discover, so I don't freak out if the dog steps off. I let the dog realize he can step back on and that there's no panic there. Okay, I think I've combed this out. I don't think I did the back knot. And... Um, 
So uh, the other purpose is that I think there needs to be more videos showing healthy handling techniques, um, showing how to deal with a naughty dog without resorting to brute force or being too aggressive with the dog. Because um, my goal is to build a relationship with this dog. Most of my clients are regular clients, and their dog gets to know me, and when their dog gets to know me, they're much better for group. Let me get the dogs in. They're just going to keep scratching. Come in, baby. Come in. Come on. Come get them. No billboard, you bad cat. Uh-uh, Titus. Come get them. Find a get them. Come get them. Um, that's another thing you'll see is that I, I have no problem because this room is you can't see it but it's, it's a smaller area and because they are safe on the table I will step away from the dog I won't leave the room but if I need to check in a client or address something else um, I have no problem stepping back from the dog if I don't know the dog if the dog doesn't know my system, then I'm less inclined. I, I'm less inclined to step away. Good girl. So I just put in the towel. I'm gonna do the sanitary cut. Um, I'm not great with really fancy poodle haircuts. I do very basic stuff. Um, a lot of a lot of things in grooming are not there's no rules for them. There is there's a lot of rules about grooming poodles, but you know, like rules of where to put the lines, where to stop shaving, where to stop. When shaving out or sanitary, I tend to be one who does quite an extensive sanitary, meaning that you can see I shave this whole area inside. Um, the reason I do that is because that hair tends to be finer so and, and thinner, so it tends to mat up, get little teeny mats. So I can prevent that just by shaving it out. And that is also, if you have a boy dog, this is also the area to clean on. This particular series of videos I'm not going to edit, so you're just going to get it as it is. Um, this is a wall bravura. Um, it's a five-in-one adjustable blade, so that means I can move back and forth and it changes the length. Um, for the for this work on a poodle I usually use the 30 length. I'm trying to find my little comb and I can't find my my little comb. Um, I tend to use the 30 length it takes it nice and short. Um, this dog, air plucking is a controversial issue now. So some groomers pluck ears, some groomers don't pluck ears. I'm kind of in between where I will pluck ears but then not pluck them aggressively. This client has actually requested I don't pluck ears. So what I still do is comb out the hair. Um, she actually gets mats in her ears. So I comb out that hair as much as I can and then take it and clip it off 
even with the outside of the ear. That way, um, I can honor the client's request without being concerned with, and still be concerned with the ear health. So she actually has a lot of wax. And like I said, it's, I mean, it just, it just it's kind of funny because it actually maps up in the ear. Um, yeah, so you can see that. We also do short ears. You can see if you take this down, it's shorter than the muzzle because she tends to get her ears in her hair and tooth. So that's why her um, ears are so short. Um, this clipper has a, a setting that's one length shorter. It's a 40, number 40 length. But I find that I can't use it without causing clipper irritation. So I avoid using it. And sometimes wider dogs have more sensitive skin, so you might need to go a longer length. But this isn't supposed to be an instructional video, I'm just talking. Said this is more a, and I'm just going to make a bunch of these videos. I'm just going to record the dogs I groom and post them, and and for people who are curious what happens in grooming, and you can see a real dog. This just my client for today. This isn't, you know, I didn't plan the dogs for today. Head up, head up. Um, So that means to get a good dog, get a bad dog. Okay. Chin. Head up. Head up. Oh, wait. Dogs are resistant to lifting their head up. Head up like this. And she is a little resistant. But I'm not, I don't try, I try not to force the dogs to do anything um, because the more you try to force them to do something, the more they're going to try to resist. So I'm trying to put gentle pressure and I'm having to put more pressure on her than I would do with the average dog because most dogs will just lift it right up. I'm grooming, I'm following the rules that I was taught and learned. Like when I'm setting the face, I go from the corner of the eye. It's not quite, it's not the top of the ear because the ear's up here. So here's the corner of the eye. And the ear's up here. So it's kind of halfway. Um, people ask me why, because if you look on her tail, I put a V, so it's an upside down V. And part of these are show dog techniques, I'm not a show groomer, but I've attended so many different classes that I've picked up show dogging techniques. So it's to give the illusion that the tail set is in the right place. Um, <clears throat> I 
the heavy touch right here because um, with this short of a blade you can get what some people call clipper burn. Clipper burn is not actually a thermal burn. Um, this blade doesn't get warm. Sorry. This blade doesn't get warm enough that it actually burn a dog. Um, and most dogs aren't going to stand still long enough for you to actually put something that hot, something that that's hot to burn the skin. Um, but what's actually have, happening is the friction of these blades. There's a blade on top here that moves back and forth. That is actually touching the skin, and the friction causes irritation. They're little micro, um, micro cuts in the skin. Um, I refer to it as clipper irritation because I don't want people to think that their dog has been burned by heat. Um, but it is something that every groomer has to be concerned with. I have one dog that I groom that is so sensitive that even with a light touch, I can't even take normal clippers to him, to his belly, to a sanitary area, because he gets red and raw. Um, poor little guy. And it, take, it took many, many grooms to figure out that that was happening. So, so I use a really light touch. I'm not digging into it because of the risk of clipper irritation. And now I'm going to shave out the feet uh, with kudos for sanitary reasons we do what's called a clean foot um, that's just big every dog has clean feet because we wash them so they're clean but clean foot just means I'm shaving all the hair off of the foot uh, not just all dogs I shave this inner pad area but um, for poodles, and I do this type of foot on other dogs as well, I'm shaving both the bottoms and the tops. It stays much cleaner. So just from the bottom here, I'm shaving around each of the toes. A lot of dogs are sensitive to this. Um, there are some dogs that I won't do a clean foot on anymore because they're so difficult and we end up basically wrestling with the dog. You know, they're pulling back and forth on their legs and you're, and this, I mean, if I jab this into the foot, this could cut the skin. So when they're pulling back and forth, I'm trying not to cut them and they just want to escape and don't care that they're risking themselves. So... Shaved out the bottom, so I'm going to go now and shave out the top. And I'm constantly checking the length on that because that was actually the 40 length, which I don't want to do. So now I'm going to go back to the 30 length and shave around the top. She's slightly resisting me. Not bad. She, you can see she's trying to pull her leg back. Um, but she's, this isn't that bad at all. She just, I mean, it tickles and feels funny. I have not trimmed her nails yet. I typically do that right after I do the detail work here. Um, the only thing, the only thing I use a 40 length for is, and I constantly drop my tools or misplace them, so. The only thing I use the 40 length for is to actually set the bottom of the cuff on this, on the leg. So I pull the hair all the way down, I slide my hand down, goes right above where I shave. And if on the 40 length, I can just make a little circle on the bottom of my hand. Um, I'm not great at scissoring, it's something I've been working on for years, but it still is not my strong point. So if I can get to 
you know, if I can use a clipper to do something as opposed to trying to hand scissor it, I will absolutely do that. Okay. And I'm just going to make that between the knuckle and the bottom of that. constantly recombing because there's always tiny little mats that we miss. And once I start doing the body clipper work, if I have a comb me dogged up perfectly, once the clipper hits a mat, it actually jogs a little bit so it puts a line in the hair. Um, and then later on, you have to go in and blend it and smooth it out. And I would just prefer to do my clipper work as smooth as possible at first instead of, so by making sure they're, hey, that's enough. Sometimes the dogs will sit there and scratch you with kennel, and that's what I just prep for their for. Again, this one. Instead of starting on the bottom, I'm starting on the top. And you can notice the 30 length, using the 30 length, going around the nails and the toes. Most of the techniques I use are techniques that I learned from other groomers. Um, from shows that, classes I've taken, from videos, from books. Um, so nothing that I've done, nothing I'm doing is, am I the original inventor of? So, you know, we all learn. Sorry, can't wear my nose. I'm going to rub my nose a lot. Bottom of the foot. This is the foot on this. The front right foot is the hardest one for me because I'm right handed. But luckily, her legs are long enough that I can just cross from underneath. Uh, smaller dogs, it's more difficult to do this. So I will go on the right side of her body and work. But then that's, but then I'm at a disadvantage. And as you've noticed, my table turns. So when I'm working on the back, I will actually lock it into position so that it's not, so the dog's resisting me doesn't make it turn. You see, I've already combed the dog. My bather's already combed the dog. And yet, there's still tiny tangles. I bathe and dry my dogs all before I groom them. Um, I don't want to be using, you know, these clipper blades and my combs are all really expensive. And dirty hair is abrasive and dulls them. So I want my dogs to be perfectly clean, perfectly dried before I ever lay a hand on them. I'm also allergic to dogs, so, so my allergies do better if they're clean. Um, you also 
damp hair if you're combing out a dog. Damp hair is more flexible than dry hair. So, you know, if you carefully comb them out while they're damp, this is after they've been cleaned, after they've been conditioned, um, you won't break as much hair as if you do, if you try to bit, brush out a dog or comb out a dog that is dirty and dry. With a poodle, and dogs like poodle, their hair continuously grows, which is why they need haircuts. And they do shed still. There's they, People say that they're non-shedding. They, they actually are shedding. They do shed. They shed about as much as we do. You think about when you comb your hair in the morning, how much hair is in the comb because we still shed. But when you're combing on a poodle, you're removing the dead hair, but you don't want to break any of the hair. Um, so combing them out when they're clean and damp is the best way to ensure that you're not breaking hair. Because if I comb with, with, you know, if you're ripping through a dog, you know, if you're ripping and combing through a dog, you're ripping, you're going to break hair. But by gentle pressure, you can comb out a dog without breaking it. Do the last foot. I don't know if you can see when I do that, all these little hairs fly out. That's the secondary hairs that are dead that that trapped in the coat. Can you hear that? Then I've got the 40 length, and I'm just going to, I don't know if I can, you can see that, but, and I'm just going to make a circle, only if, like if the dog were wearing an anklet, like a little bracelet around the, um, the ankle. It's almost where you would put that line. And I'll switch it back, I'm just using my little finger, I'm just switch it back to my 30. I can do this work with my regular clippers. Um, just as easily. But the little cordless clippers are so maneuverable and so light and quiet that I generally will use them when I'm doing this type of work. And if you can see, I'm actually using, so I'm, the dog's foot sitting right there. And I can do this because she's really good. But I'm using my thumb and my pointer finger to kind of separate that foot so that then I can go in and just shave it out. Um, I know different groomers, some groomers aren't as, as aggressive with this shaving out. I'm pretty aggressive, meaning that I take a lot of, I go really short and I take all that hair out. And I do that because uh, here in Utah, we've got snow, and they get snowballs stuck to that hair if you leave longer hair. 
Um, other groomers believe that a dog needs to have that to cushion their, their between their toes, their pods. Um, and that's just one of those things that different groomers do different things. Okay, next I'm gonna do nails. I use a Dremel to do nails. Uh, it's easier for me. I don't like using nail clippers. I will if I have to. But so this is just a regular Dremel cordless that has the sanding drum attached. And then I have a special attachment that goes, that screws on here. And it captures the dust and prevents, because if without this, hair can get caught and, and ripped out. So that prevents it. And then it has adjustable little diameters there. I typically kind of round it and roll it. so that it doesn't leave edges. I use a drum over clippers because I have a hard time controlling the clippers. So I end up clicking dogs, meaning there's a, there's a blood vein in there. And if you go back too far, you can make that bleed. Um, it's not, the dog's not gonna bleed to death if you get it quick, but it doesn't feel good to them. And then you have to deal with the bleeding and so, we really avoid it, so I don't panic if it happens. Um, it's a much harder for me to quick a dog with using a Dremel, the sounding Dremel, because I can actually feel the texture getting softer right before the quick. So I can take this right back to right before where that quick is without quicking it. Um, she has white nails, so you can actually see through them. So makes it much easier if you can see right where that vein is. Um, so then in the front, you can see how sharp they are. Can you see how sharp they are? They're pretty sharp. And just kind of roll it. You can see how good she is. Most dogs, if they're going to be naughty, will be naughty for their nails. And to me, it's such a common thing that I won't even mention to their owners that they're naughty for their nails because so many dogs are naughty for their nails. Only when they're really bad, and I think the dog poses a threat to themselves. Okay, so now I'm going to use my regular clipper, and I use clippers with a clipper vac, so it's a vacuum that pulls up the hair as I'm clipping it. Much cleaner, much more sanitary. Um, and I'm going to double check the length that I groom her. I've already checked it, but I always forget. So I do five eighths on her. Oh, so here's the clipper back. So it has a hose, special attachment. And then for the five eighths inch length, what I do is a slip-on comb. So this is a comb that you can see. And it just snaps on top of my clippers. Um, and then I turn on my clippers and turn on a clipper head.
Well, I was learning to groom um, in order to make sure that I'm not being too, using too hard of a pressure or that, especially the dog is reacting to me. I will always test to see how does that feel. So this is the thinnest part of our skin. So I'll run it on there to say, okay, did that hurt? Am I doing something that's hurting the dog? And if I poke them like this, that's going to hurt. This doesn't hurt. Um, so when I was learning to groom, I would constantly check my technique, you know, my brushes. I can I do this through my brushes as well. Um, I use brushes by like Chris Christensen because they're not rough. They're individually um, rounded. So each of these pins does not have a harsh edge that's going to scratch. Um, I'm very concerned about safety um, and I don't, I typically invest in the better quality items because they last longer, they're manufactured mindfully. So they think about, they think about things of how does this feel on the dog's skin. I think that probably, not probably, I know that 90% of my clients have no idea um, about the thought process that I go through to ensure that their dogs are safe, um, that I am not going to injure them. I make sure when I'm moving legs that I'm always doing it within the natural range of the dog, meaning I'm not going to yank these legs way out to the side because the dog's leg doesn't move that way. But I can move them forward. Um, sometimes the dog will twist the, their body so that the legs way out to the side. Um, but that's the dog doing it, not me. Um, I still will try to make sure and move them back within the natural range. Most of the clips I do are called contour clips, which means that I'm using the same length all over the dog. Poodles have a lot of different trims, and sometimes those trims leave their legs longer than their bodies because it looks proportionately what's more pleasing. They are more work to keep up. So the owner has to either pull them out at home or bring them in more often. So most clients don't want to do that. And so they opt for a much more, a shorter haircut or shorter haircut that's easier to maintain. And grooming, I have to be conscious of areas that could potentially I could injure the dog. The dog has this flap of skin, this is called the tuck up. It's a really thin flap of skin that easily could fit in there, and I could nick the dog. So I have to be conscious that when I'm going over this area, that I'm not going up into it like that. Um, that's the natural growth of the hair, anyway to grow like that. A lot of the dogs I will start out with a clipper against the grain. Because when you do a clipper, a blade against the grain of the hair, it takes it as the shortest length possible. So you're pushing that hair right up. Um, so a lot of times I will start with, this is a one inch comb. And I do that because longer hair gets pulled up shorter in the clipper back. And if I'm working on multiple lengths of hair, I could end up 
leaving chunks and, you know, lines. And so I'll start out going against the grain on the entire dog. Typically I do it two lengths longer than the length I want for the finish length. At this point, I'm not trying to make it look perfect. I'm just sort of trying to get off most of the hair. And I'm still conscious of the direction the hair grows. So I'm not going to the sides like that. I'm not doing that. Because the hair grows in this direction, I'm going that direction. The smoother I get the haircut at this stage, the less finishing work I have to do when I finish clippering the doll. I don't know if you saw that, but I actually grabbed her cut up right there. And I did that so I don't accidentally jab her um, when I'm doing it. And I do a lot of supporting, you know, I always just put a leg behind, put my weight against. Because um, I don't just want to go at the dog and startle them. I want to provide strength. I want them to feel safe and secure. Going right up into the neck. And the clipper back collects the hair as it's sucking it up. So it does get full and will need to be changed. And I can tell by the sound that it's going to need to be emptied in just a second. which this is the finished length I want, which is a 5 8 um, And since I've got most of that length off, I can just go in and just worry about finishing it up now. It's at this point that I'm really concerned about how even it is. I don't want to see blade marks. or choppiness, because then I have to go and finish that with scissors later on. Some people don't back brush when they use the clipper back because the hair is the suction is actually pulling the hair up. But I'm kind of obsessed with an even, smooth trim. So I still back brush. I go over the hair a couple times. By brushing it up, it, uh, you can get all the longer pieces of hair. You see I can kind of curl right around like that. The less I have to fix with my scissors, the happier I am. Good. 
So for contour clip, as it says, you're just following the contours of the dog. And the entire time, everything I'm doing, I'm mindful of the hair pattern growth. So I know that hair grows this direction and then starts to go this direction. And if I follow that as close as I can, um, then I won't put a lot of choppy lines in the head. I'm picking up legs, removing them. I like to give them a visual clue of what I'm doing. And so I just have that her left, right leg up. Um, and if I want her left leg, I'll say, you legs. And I give her, and I slowly lift it, because I give her opportunity to switch her, her weight. Um, I don't want to just yank it up and put her off, um, throw her off balance. Because if I do that, she's going to feel uncomfortable. And the more uncomfortable I make her feel, the worse she's going to behave for the grooming. So all these things that I do um, when I'm grooming and touching the dog, you know, I run my hand along their body a lot. Um, because I want them to feel reassured. All these things that I do is to build trust between me and the dog so that the dog feels safe. Um, the easiest dog to groom is a dog that feels safe and trusts the groomer that's working on them. They're not going to act up. They're not going to flinch back. And for some dogs, that's not 
they might not ever get to that place, but it sure makes my job easier and it's less stress for me if I'm working on a job that's at that point. Okay, so I've done all the clipper work on the body, so I'm just going to make sure I got all the tangles in the pad. Um, and when I do a hold like this, so what I'm doing is I'm actually holding the ears out of the way so they don't get sucked up in the clipper back, and then I'm holding her muzzle. But I'm actually holding them really gently. I don't have a death grip on the dog. All I'm trying to do is hold the ear out of the way, but also... Um, keep control and, and keep the muzzle out of the way so that the dog doesn't rip back, tear back this way, and end up getting injured. Again, I think I said earlier that the more I yank and the more I try to forcefully control the dog, the more they're going to resist. So everything I'm doing, if I'm holding it up here, I'm not, I'm not ganking that dog. I'm not holding him forcefully. Um, the dog could pull out. Okay. So, put it back in. I have completed all the clipper work. So, at this point, I'm going to go back through and finish up with scissors. Cheers. And I'm not trying to get, I mean, there's a level, so I'll comb it up and fluff it up. And then I'm not going to go over the dog completely. I'm just going to go over the areas that there might be a little bit of line, might be a little bit of chalk. Um, there are groomers that can completely scissor a dog. I am not one of those groomers. I tend to, if I, um, I tend to put more holes in a, in a coat with scissors, in a coat with scissors. So all I'm doing is trying to remove any obvious so sometimes it puts the clump and then anything that sticks out, I'll even up the bottom of this uh, Sometimes they're even and they make them uneven. see why I would want to be as smooth as possible with the clipper because then I have less fixing, cleaning up to do at this point. So, so. Or under bum. So she's always that hair missing on the bottom of her tail. And I suspect that she actually chews on it. So, and I am not great at doing pom poms. So, 
don't expect a tutorial for how to do perfect pom poms on the fly. There's rules for how long you should make this. I'm not following it because it should match with her top knot. And but you can see there's a huge chunk missing right there, so not a perfect. Okay. blades or shears for most of the work I do simply because most of the lines on a dog are curved except for the legs. Um, I still might try to get a straight line with a straight line with a curved blade. It doesn't work as well, but it doesn't stop me from trying. I always hair in an armpit, but I can never get with it quickly, so I twist the skin. You couldn't even see that. So I twist the skin so that I can get the hair right there. Okay, we're going to finish her head. Her head over here. Oh, 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 oh. See how she goes over her pretty head. Cat's going to come interrupt us in a minute. That's Bilbo. He frequently interrupts us. Hey, come on. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, come on. Most of my clients are used to Bilbo coming up to visit them. When I say my clients, I mean my doggy clients. Some of the dogs are too aggressive with him. And uh, so I will put Bilbo away. Move your bum. Keep on going. Bilbo. 
Good luck. Really? <laughs> you typical cat. Okay, go down. have most of the dogs picked up for the day. Got one dog left to groom. So some appointments, I have more interruptions than others because I have dogs being dropped off and dogs being picked up. Um, and that's just the reality of grooming when you schedule like I do. I don't have a receptionist. I don't have a room separate for check-in. Wait, no. Okay. And I don't know if I mentioned that mentioned that scissoring is not my strong point. Top knots are not my strong point at all. Let's turn your head this way. I know, he's bothering me. So look, you're being a pest. No, you know what normally will get rid of them? Like that coming. Yeah, there that is coming. Coming. Oh, there she oh, she's getting mad when you aren't there. I think she's aren't there. Yeah. Oh there, you look like you right now. Jenny wants to go up there. So you go down, there you go. No, you stay down. looking better than that side. So, but this side's shorter, longer. So, so when I'm using it up. Oops. Nope. Come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. Good boy, girl. Right there. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm generally pretty happy if it's just even from side to side.
It's not even we just took it out. We turn our ears and we never even um, with the haircut. And I don't know if that's because I'm doing them uneven or if the groomer or if the owner trimmed them at home. There's always chunks of hair missing. And I don't normally cut out mats, I normally clean out. So not so I'm pretty sure the owner does a little bit trimming at home. Which is okay, fair enough. But I don't want to stress about a groom being uneven if it's not me causing the uneven. I want to tell this one.